We have given up ground as a church, as an ecclesia, as a body of Christ. We have given it away. It's not been taken from us. We have given it up. Babylon has no authority. When I talk about schemes, like registration, schemes are created out of greed, envy, and fear. We've read the end of the book. We know where the victory lies, and it lies in Jesus Christ. This is what I want to do with fear. Okay? Oh, we don't need it anymore. We are the ecclesia. This is a clash of two kingdoms. Because there is a science to registration. Did you know registration is an ancient, ancient thing? The Bible is replete with language that is martial, with language that is governmental, with language that is political. By the way, that word religion doesn't mean Buddhist, Islam, doesn't mean any of those things. It means Jesus freaks and holy rollers. We can mix uh, we can mix church and politics because my Bible tells me that the government will be on his shoulders. Hello, Levitical Kingdom privateers. Welcome to the C2K Report. My name is Rick Hidalgo. I am a <coughs> privateer, and this is my friend, my Conrad, my Conway, Randy Conway. And he is here for the umptillionth time. Thank you, Randy, for coming. Welcome. Absolutely, Rick. You know, isn't it strange? Some sometimes uh, God really gives us a download, and uh, sometimes we have great plans, and sometimes we come on here and we look at each other and go, "Wonder where God's going to take us tonight." I think that might be one of those times, right? Where is God going to take us tonight? Stay tuned if you want to find out, right? <laughs> well. <clears throat> I think I know why he brought us in tonight with kind of deer in the headlights looks because it's our last week on earth, right? Oh, yeah, it might be. <laughs> right? So it's like, you know, because the world's going to end. There's a there's an eclipse coming, Randy. Haven't you heard? Oh, right. Right. <laughs> you know, we've only got how many days left? It's a, it's a national emergency. It's a state emergency. It's a... Oh, my goodness gracious. The rumors, right? You know, they're the doing rumors. this, they're doing that. You know, this is a new, this is a project that they're doing. Everybody better have their phones and taking pictures and, right? We've heard it all. The foolishness that fools contrive. Right? Right. So, <clears throat> well, we, we, we not only had... Uh, uh, a, a long pre-show, longer than we normally do, because we're just really looking for which direction God wanted us to go. But I couldn't even get online. I had to reboot everything, reboot the computer, reboot the router, try a dozen times. It took uh, over half an hour just get just to get connected with you. Must well, be that that thing that's coming on the eighth, right? Well, Randy, uh, your router knows it's the end of the world. Right. Right. So it's just sitting on <laughs> a rock me. looking for Christ's return. You know, so, hey, uh, if your router knows, you know, it's kind of like the rocks will cry out. You know, even the router's the router crying out. Cry yeah. out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the only problem I have with that is I still see the tares amongst the wheat. And I think the tares are going to get gathered mm. up, bundled up, and thrown in the fire. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> Might be kind of hard to do that if they're all burned up already. Well, that's why they want the eclipse so that the sun's not so intense and they won't catch on fire when they all start getting bundled up. Wait a, wait, a, wait, wait, wait a minute, Randy. You're on to something. <laughs> so I've got an idea. <clears throat> okay. We're going to have an eclipse, right, which means right before the eclipse, it's it's at its brightest, Right. So right. let's use this opportunity <clears throat> to do a science experiment. You know, everybody get a magnifying glass <laughs> and let's see how many ants we can put out of their misery before the eclipse. And whoever puts the most ants out of their misery wins a prize. Now, Randy, you and I are going to have to really think about what that prize is. Oh, my goodness. You know, it it's almost... It's almost that silly, isn't it, Rick? When you listen yeah. to the talking heads, it's almost that silly. 
Uh, Actually, I, mean, I think I, I make more. I make more sense. That makes talking, more sense. Yeah, right. I've listened to the prognosticators and and the so-called prophets, and and I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't want to. I don't want to, um, you know, uh, ridicule something if God spoke to somebody. You know, I really don't. But on the other hand, I'm listening to uh, not so much the, those who are 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 giving some warning from the Lord. But those who are shouting from the rooftops from Babylon, the Babylonian talking head, the Babylonian fools, and and the foolishness that is coming out of their mouth is just, it's, I mean, you just well to, to, to get out your magnifying glass and, and, and burn ants and have, have a contest. It really is, uh, I think, that, that silly to that point. I mean, in all of my life, and that is I mean, years, you know, it, how many anomalies have we seen, you know, uh, eclipses, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, you know, uh, comets and, and different things, signs in the heavens. There are signs in the heavens. I know there are. God tells right. us they are. Yep. <clears throat> but I've never seen this much silliness coming out of uh, Babylon. And it's like, suddenly it's a, it's a no holds barred, match i know something about those you know something about those because i see uh, these things like oh well cern's gonna fire off after a two-year hiatus on on that same day and i see where the world economic forum is uh uh coming down with uh, uh statements that every country should adopt and the and the whole multiple letter uh sequence Uh, that we are familiar with has to add another letter. Um, and it's the letter P because the word that starts with P is a normal thing. And we all have to accept all this stuff coming at once, literally all coming at once. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's hard to take it serious, at, you know, when it's coming, um, not when it's coming from the word of God or uh, coming from someone who's really seeking him, but when it's coming from those, they're not even Babylonian talking heads. They're bobble Babylonian talking heads, <clears throat> like a like a silly little bobble head. And it reminds me of a verse, Rick, in Psalms is, why do the nations rage? Why do the people plot in vain? And the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. And guess the reply to that is, he who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury. So all the silliness and all the <laughs> nations raging, the one we serve, our king, He's looking down at him and, and literally laughing. Let us turn on the <laughs> flux like capacitor. You know, right. let, us, let us collide the hetron or whatever it's called, the collider, right? Let us let us do this and cause the whole world to burn. Ha 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 ha. Right? Okay. Right. So as we're as we're kind of making fun of this, Rick. Well, and you say, we're going to have a fun. contest and get a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. We're a good company because our king sits in the heaven as these nations rage mm -hmm. and he laughs. Yeah, he laughs. <laughs> we're a good company. He definitely laughs. You know, we're but Brandy, the, the, thing, the thing that disturbs me is, is the Christian channels. Because, look, you know, don't think for a second. Mm -hmm that their monetization check at the end of the month isn't bigger after an event like this than, uh. than, than the other. Okay. <clears throat> These guys are milking it for every penny that they can get from eyeballs coming to their channels. Nobody comes to the C2K report to watch cat videos or to find out when the rapture is going to happen or, you know, or any <laughs> of that kind of stuff because they know the, the people who have seen this channel, they know that the content on here is very serious. It's something that's, you know, that's 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 real and it's it's helpful. And that's why we only get 50, 60, 70 views 
on these shows. You know, right. if, if we were to have, you know, uh, a, a, a thumbnail that said, into the world, question mark, find out here, you know, and this really cool celestial stuff on our thumbnail, you know, with you and I going, you know, on it or something, <laughs> we would have so many looks. People would be coming on. We, you know, uh, we get monetized some good money at the end of the month. But that's not the purpose of C2K Report. That's not what we're here for. We're not here to tell you guys lies about things that are going on. We're not here to tell you guys things that we have no clue about. Let's be honest. Those people have no clue. No okay? clue. No clue. In fact, does anybody have a clue, Rick? I mean, there's, there's some good reporters and some people I really like to watch that are, that are analyzing what's going on in the world. And I appreciate that. We're, and like you said, we're not here to be analytical of the things going on in the world. We're here to teach what it means to be a child of God, to be uh, a royal priesthood, to be an ambassador of Christ, to be part of a, a holy nation and how we self-govern uh, in that nation and how God expects us to govern. That we're, it's a teaching uh, genre. But uh, as I've watched the things about the bridges and the things about the, the, the eclipse and the things about uh, the collider and all those huh. things, it's not that I'm disinterested uh, because I want to know if they're trying to do something that's going to affect me. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, God sits in the heaven and, and, and laughs. And, and, at the, uh, and in addition to that, I've come to... to learn to know to understand that you can believe nothing they say and only a small portion of what you even see <laughs> well you're just a really nice guy randy because my I, I have two words who cares okay who cares that, that, that's basically that's basically me i come from that angle because look <clears throat> you know i'll tell you what it really is squirrel it's it's a distraction to take your eyes off of the race that we're running, to take our to move our feet away from the the, the track that we're running on, the straight and narrow. Yeah. All, all of us are looking at that wide, um, that that the wide way. We're looking at the broad way right now and saying, "Oh, look at that broad way! Look what's going on over there!" And we're kind of getting distracted and looking at the broad way rather than focusing on. The straight and narrow, and um, this is just another another way that Babylon, uh, you know, you know, slows down the uh, the things that are going on within within ecclesias like like this one. It is very interesting that some of the cities that are going to pass through and the associations with Jonah and Nineveh that is interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's from the Lord or not because I am not one he has designated to disclose uh, that information. I do find that intriguing at the very least. And if some of the people I've listened to that are associating, well, look at the cities it's going through, look at the, the access that it's crossing over, look at the ones that happened last, then maybe Babylon is the one that needs to be paying very close attention. And, they and the are. rest of us. You know they are. Well, yeah. the rest of us then, uh, remain in a position of seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things like eclipses and bridges and CERN, <clears throat> they're not going to affect us because uh, he shelters us in his strong right arm in the cleft of his rock. He's our shield and our buckler. He is our, he is our rear guard. He is our all in all. And my dependence uh, come uh, Monday the 8th is not in a single bobble-headed Babylonian talking head. It is in our king. In him will I put my trust. Uh, whom shall I, of whom shall I be afraid? What can man do to me? Says the psalmist. I, I trust in the Lord with, uh, with my future, my today, and my tomorrow. I'll tell you what. There probably is a talking head who knows everything that's going on and has complete perspective. You give me the name of the last talking head who died and went to heaven, 
and I'll give you the name of the last talking head who knows what's going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, but if they're if they're still in this realm, uh, they have no clue. I mean, there there could be uh, there could be esoteric things going on for sure. And a lot of that stuff you're talking about, you know, the Nineveh relations and the, you know, crossing this line or that line uh, at this particular time and doing <clears throat> the math and gematria and, and this and that and everything else. You can do all that stuff if you want to and have fun with it and, and come up with theories and all kinds of things to sell books and get people to watch your videos. But at the end of the day, it has no significance in the one thing that we're supposed to be doing, and that's building the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And and the thing is, we <clears> take <throat> our eyes off of that prize when these kind of things happen. And, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. So, it, so that, that's, there is the distraction you referred to. So that's Rick's, that's Rick's warning. Uh, take this as a Rick warning. Uh, squirrel alert. There's uh, distractions ahead. Stay on the prize keep running the race and do not worry about what happens to um what happens you know during this celestial event what's the old hymn writer say turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world the things in this realm the things of this strangely realm. dim we'll grow, in the light we'll, of his glory and grace will get strangely bright as the rockets are thrown into space? Is that how it goes? Um, that's not how it oh, goes. That's not how it goes. Okay. It'll grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's a good word for tonight. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So, yeah, things are happening. There, there, There's a lot of news out there. There's a lot of events. There's a lot of warnings. Uh, not telling anybody to not heed warnings. You do... You take it to the Lord, what the Lord tells you to do as for you and your house. He is who you will listen to. But <clears throat> foremost, turn your eyes right now upon Jesus and don't be worrying about the bobbleheads. Yeah, we're not, we are not lawyers or attorneys, so we're not here to tell you what to do. Uh, but I will, but I do, I, I mm -hmm. am very serious in my squirrel alert. Do not be distracted. Do not be distracted. Do not be distracted. Because if, if we're distracted, what happens, Rick? We're deceived if we're distracted. We're deceived. And that's a perfect segue because we don't want you to be deceived. So we want you to know the ongoing efforts of this Ecclesia and let you know that we have a great, great event coming up on the 12th. We have a summit of this Holy Ecclesia nation, and all of you are invited. So what does that mean? If you don't have shopyourfarm.com, if you don't have a membership for shopyourfarm.com, 12 bucks a year. Dig through the couch cushions. Go find out where the dog buries the, the quarters in the backyard. Start going through every place and gather up all the change in your house. Go fishing and get a coin out of a fish's mouth, okay? Do all the things that you need to do to get that 12 bucks gathered up and go get yourself a membership on Shop Your Farm because that's the only place you'll be able to attend the Ecclesia Summit on the 12th of April, 2024. Yes, we'll still be here. I'm guaranteeing that. Well, pretty much guaranteeing that. We'll still <clears throat> be here, okay? And when we when we get to that summit, all you got to do is go to the VC menu item up in the top right hand corner, which means video conference. And when it asks for a room name, type in summit and you can attend the summit at eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central, Friday, April the 12th. Trinity Wrestling America is seeking to build relationships with churches and like-minded organizations. TWA brings unique stories that support your messaging to the community through our professional wrestling events. Our clever, episodic way of presenting gospel concepts will thrill your neighbors and create a buzz that will bring people into your building 
that wouldn't ordinarily attend any church service, giving you opportunities to build your platform to a diverse subset of your community. TWA is setting up a circuit across Nebraska, Iowa, and South Dakota. Our goal is to create a brand of professional wrestling that will overcome our evil counterparts with good, as it says in Romans 12:21. The scriptures compel us to lift up Christ, and in turn he will draw men to himself. John 12:32. Contact us today and let's chat about how together we can build Christ kingdom. And that word goes uh, double for all of you who are involved in the uh, state discussion groups across the country. And if you've got friends that you've been inviting to your state discussion groups and trying to get them involved, right now is a really great time uh, <clears throat> to bring them in for $12 a year, get on Shop Your Farm, and, and they will see that they are not alone in wanting to see kingdom first ideas to live in God's kingdom, to fulfill the role uh, that we that was appointed unto us because it was an appointment by the King of Kings uh, that he gave to us a commission and an appointment and an election that he that was placed on us. It's a uh, it's a huge um, role uh, that we are to fulfill as sons of God. And we've talked about that a lot on this show, Rick, about all creation groaning and waiting on the sons of God to be freed into, into that revelation. And we've talked about uh, all the parables, the kingdom of heaven is like, and we've talked about, you know, self-governance is nothing to do with myself other than I'm the one that, that is going to be uh, taking the active role uh, and making the declaration, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, because this literally is a biblical narrative and a biblical roadmap for how we should be living. And it, it comes back over and over and over to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you can do that in your house in the middle of hostile territory, because every ambassador that was ever appointed by any ruler, any king, a potentate, prime minister, president, when they appointed an ambassador, that ambassador did not stay in the safety of the primary ruler who appointed him. They sent them abroad somewhere, and they might be in hostile territory. Is that not the life of the follower of Christ? That's the life of any ambassador, and that is, and that is what we are. And that's you're in Christ. Are. That's what we are. So you're going to see how many more ambassadors there are if you'll if you'll pay attention to what Rick just said, April 12th, 2024, shopyourfarm.com, cost you 12 bucks a year. You'll find that you can use that over and over even for your own personal use, Rick. You and I can get on and have a video just like we are right now and have a video conference back and forth if you've got family if you know, that are miles and miles apart, you can get on shopyourfarm.com and have a video conference where grandma and grandpa can see the grandkids and you can see each other's faces, you can converse, and you can do it with the, the assurance that this is a privately owned network, privately owned servers. You can discuss things in private uh, without wondering if, if uh, the helicopters are going to start flying over your house because of the conversation you had. Right. And it's not owned by China. It's not owned <laughs> by anybody uh, outside of this ecclesia. And we do not gather data. We do not spy on people or what they're doing. In fact, the data disappears after a short time. Uh, we make it that way on purpose because we don't want to know what's going on. 
So, um, one more thing, major well, announcement. Go, go ahead. Before you get off of the summit, what was the number one thing on the last summit? Because we're doing a summit every 120 days now, right? Every quarter. Every we're quarter. doing four a year. And the and the last summit we had, summit we had in January, what was the number one comment after we did that and we and we brought all these state discussion groups together? What was the number one comment that you heard from people? We need to do this more often. <clears throat> that was that was one of them. The one I heard was, wow, it feels so good to know we are not alone. So we need to do it more often, and we are not alone, and we're going to do it more often because we're doing it every quarter now, and we're not only not going to be alone, we're going to grow uh, by the grace of God. ET, phone home. We're not alone. We're not alone. <laughs> And I'm sorry to interrupt you. You had another thing you wanted to, to, no, to move but that on. Was a, that was a joke. Please, everybody know that I am not an ET guy. So that they're demonic. Okay. So that's not how I see it. That was a joke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's just that I do like Reese's Pieces. And <clears throat> ET is like, he's the homeboy for Reese's Pieces. Reese's okay? Pieces. Right. <laughs> so just a major announcement. Got nothing to do with ET. All right. Major yeah. announcement that I have to make. So there is a substantial project for the Ecclesia to do that's got major implications <clears throat> and really important. You need to either attend your state discussion group or you need to uh, go to shopyourfarm.com and up in the menu area, you'll see the word Ecclesia. Go down underneath that Ecclesia menu, and you're going to see a whole list of, <coughs> um, of <clears throat> moderators. Reach out to a moderator, even if it's not in your state, and ask them to be part of this major thing that we got going on. I'm not going to say what it is specifically because this is a public channel, but we have a private thing going on that is world-changing. OK, and and I'm not making that up. So reach out to somebody in, you know, one of the moderators on, on that list and ask them, uh, ask them to, you know, for information on how to attend a state discussion group so that you can get the information that you need. And another thing that you're going to need, if you don't already have it and you have any interest of pursuing the journey of coming out of Babylon, you will need an Ecclesia email. You will not be disclosed information that's this permanent on public facilities. You will, or, or this important, okay, <clears throat> on public facilities. The only way you'll get important information is to come in to the Ecclesia email. That is separate from Shop Your Farm. That is $10 annually. Another really expensive thing. And you will need to get uh, uh, an agreement for that. Okay, we have an agreement. So you can email me at c2kreport at outlook.com, c2kreport at outlook.com, outlook and let me know that you want an Ecclesia email, and I will send you the agreement. And You, know, you made an important uh separation between shop your farm and the email there that sometimes people get confused and, and i think it's worthy of, of reminding people the ecclesia email is is a separate thing all by itself that ten dollars a year shop your farm is, is a separate ministry of of a of another house that put that together uh utilized by the ecclesia that's totally separate and c2k is separate from both of those c2k is just this podcast and I'm sure you probably got a banner run across the bottom. Tell people how they can donate to uh, the Ecclesia Assembly. Uh, they can donate to the C2K report at the very same address, but they have to they have to put a notation in the memo if it's for the Ecclesia or if it's for C2K. Uh, but uh, uh, that's the way the whole thing works. <laughs> All of them are separate entities, separate ministries of different houses. And uh, some of them are ministries of the, of the Ecclesia that all comes together. But 
<clears throat> this this event, this this uh, project that you're referring to, Rick. Um, we were talking about it a little bit uh, before before you hit the record button, and it literally is. You know, we're all familiar with. Uh, you know, uh, we pray, Thy will be done, uh, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We're familiar with the courts of heaven, and we t we're familiar with the idea that heaven is a realm and the earth is a realm, and um, you know, what we bind on earth can be bound in heaven. What we loose on earth can be loosed in heaven. That's an interaction between those realms. And what we're what we're talking about this project is literally a a huge interaction between those realms. And um, I mean, <clears throat> I could we could start down through the scripture and verify over and over and over the interaction between those, even the verse I read out of Psalms that God sits in heaven and laughs at the, the attempts of men is an interaction between those realms. Uh, Paul speaks of a, a, a great deal, uh, even in Ephesians. I won't read it because Paul, sometimes his sentences are, are entire paragraphs. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, as he's explaining uh, the grace that was given to him to preach to the Gentiles, it literally had an effect that was known. And you can look it up for yourselves, folks. It, it's Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 1 down through about uh, uh, 13. But in around 10, at, uh, verse 10, in that little discourse, he's saying that uh, what he's doing, the ministry that he's performing uh, to, to the Gentiles in this earthly realm is seen, in, and this is exactly what it says, Rick, is made known to the rulers and authorities and heavenly places. That is a literal interaction between those realms, and that's what you're talking about. We are looking to seek first his kingdom, so that the interaction we have between this earthly realm and that heavenly realm are are in concert and harmony with one another uh, so that as we pray thy will be done on earth as is as it is in heaven we're not sitting on a rock and waiting for him to perform that we are following that path that is narrow and the way that is straight and saying this is the way we will walk in it and that's where we will see uh, his will done, and we will interact with the courts of heaven. Right. Now, you, you mentioned rulers and authorities. Are those the same rulers and authorities that are in Romans 13, you know, the same rulers, powers, and authorities? I think we talked about those oh. a long time ago, yeah, we didn't did. we? I, I just thought it was kind of funny you said those words because... I distinctly remember those words being in Romans 13. Like, exactly. like maybe it applies to the same heavenly authority. And was it not written by the same author? <laughs> yeah, same author. Hmm. Maybe like he's thinking the same thing in both places. I don't know. Like just a guess. Just a guess. Thing. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah. imagine that. <laughs> Silver is hot. It is real money. It is God's money. So I encourage you to get your Liberty Dollar account now. The big commercial price manipulators have thrown everything that they had at silver over the past five days and still the silver price remains strong. Get your silver account now. Help Liberty Dollar folks get to the 3000 mark. My whole family has an account. And I encourage you to please get yours now. We need you. You'll be really glad you did. Watch what happens with silver. Thanks. So, uh, you know, tonight, <clears throat> I've had so many things happen this week, Randy, that have just gotten me thinking about things at a whole different level. Um, and there was a time when you began to separate the concepts of power and authority. Yes. Okay. Um, now, what's <clears throat> interesting about, about the way you were separating it is you were talking about how Babylon has a certain degree of power because they enforce it. They got minions who enforce that power. 
but they have no authority. None. I got to thinking about that. And I thought to myself, you know, you've got a room <clears throat> full of Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, <clears throat> Minnie Mouse, you know, Pluto, the whole character gamut. They're okay. all fictional, right? Popeye, right. olive oil, they're all in there. Room full. And then a, a man walks into that room. Who's got the authority in that room? Not the fictions. Right. The real man who walked in has a higher standing than the fictions. <clears throat> so let me ask you a question. Imagine that we lived in a world that was totally captured by Babylon. Can you imagine that, Randy? <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> okay. Imagine we lived in a world that was totally captured by Babylon, that was following Babylon's uh, statutes and codes and, <clears throat> you know, all the different uh, goofy things that they come up with um, that people, so many people think are just amazing. You know, oh, that, that, that's good. That, that's law. That's the law. <clears throat> but Babylon's a fiction because it's a corporation and all the elements of Babylon are corporations. And if you don't believe that, go look it up on a corporate search engine like a Dun & Bradstreet or, you know, uh, something like that. And you'll find out that all of them are corporations, um, even your local courthouse, even the, you know, your uh, health department, uh, you know, every aspect. The governor's office, is, they're all corporations. Okay, they're all corporations. Every, depart every department of the federal government, absolutely. Local government, state government, all of them, they're all corporations, okay? So <clears throat> knowing that, knowing that everything is being ruled right now by corporations and contracts, what happens when the ecclesia stands up on the scene? Who's got the authority, first of all? The Ecclesia, because the Ecclesia is the higher power on a higher standard, because we are truly being governed under the, for lack of a better term, the real <laughs> common law, which is what's common to all men. <clears throat> right? We're all subject to God. Every right. last one of us. Okay? So the Ecclesia has a higher standing, so they have the authority. But now, who's got the power? And I started to think about that, Randy. I started to think about that. And I started to realize that if an ecclesia operates under its indentures, it has not just the authority, but it's got the powers too. Because the very armies of heaven will support the indentures of the bondservants of God on earth as it is, not was or will be, but as it is in heaven. Uh, I have to agree with that. Uh, of course, that that separation of authority and power comes from they can't have any authority because we're told in the word that Christ has all authority. Mm -hmm. That means there's nothing left over for them to have. Right. There's nothing left over. So all authority, but the power, <clears throat> as you're described, you're you are correct. He has the power too, but what is the power then that this fiction has? It it can't be anything more than uh, the Wizard of Oz had power until the curtain was pulled back. Mm -hmm. It was a an assumed or presumed power. It was power given to him out of the fear of the people, because the the people of Oz believed he had power. So. Through their actions, they actually provided him the power that he had. And as soon as the curtain was pulled back, that was that was that power was dispelled immediately. It was no, it no longer existed. <clears throat> That's the world we live in. So, <clears throat> in Revelation, I don't know if it's ten or twenty. I can't remember where it says that power was given to the beast to overcome the saints right 
Am right. I wrong? Is that what it says? No, that, that is what it says. Okay. Do you notice the absence of the word authority? Correct. It actually says that power was given unto the beast to overcome the saints. That means, that means it's not authority. It's not something that's, it's, it's, it, it wasn't given authority. It was given a power, and that power is to contract with the saints. And that contracting with the saints is what allows the beast to overcome the saints. Because if you're in contract with the beast, uh, God's not going to void a contract. God's not going to, right. God's not going to interfere in a private contract. If you really want to contract with the beast, he's going to allow you to do it. Am I wrong, hmm. Randy? No, uh, I think we we've covered that before. That that's why we have to come out of the contracts. We we have to come out of Babylon because those contracts are valid. Because what we talk about, the interaction of the realms, what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So if we have a contract, it's a contract. I just find it interesting how when someone wants to use the word, the scriptures, against you for having this concept of coming out of Babylon. Right. That's the go-to verse. <clears throat> then explain how it is that the beast was given power over the saints. Well, I just explained it. The beast contracts with the saints and therefore nullifies, nullifies the intervention ability of uh, the, the, the armies of heaven. The armies of heaven can't intervene in a contract that you've created here on earth because... The contract you created here on earth is also created in heaven. Yeah, in fact, Re Revelation uh, seventeen thirteen sa says that they hand over their power and authority to the beast. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> how do you hand over authority and power? Is that what it says? Authority yeah. and power. Mm -hmm. Huh. That's interesting. How do you hand over authority? Because okay, okay, you're you are the church of the living God. In a system that's totally fictitious, you right. have the authority, no no question about it. So what do you have to do, in order to give away that authority? You have to be treasonous. You literally have to step down, to their standing. Mm -hmm. You have to become a fiction. That's the only way you can do it. There is no other way to do it. You have to operate through the fiction. And Randy, what's that verse that we're always quoting? What's the second part that nobody ever reads? We said, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. There's more. And they loved not their fictitious lives unto death. Wow, that matches. So they love not their fictitious lives unto death. So how about this? Here's an idea. How about we not hand over authority by coming down to the level of fiction? Right. Isn't that how uh, the wizard in Oz got his power and authority? It had to be handed over to him. And, and he was certainly at the fictional level because was, he was not what he was... Uh, right. what, what he was purporting to be. It's like saying, but we want a king like everybody else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is like saying we want a king like everybody else. But <clears throat> those days are over. Mm -hmm. The days of kings are over, folks. I don't know if you know this, but that is actually, you know, probably one of the most misunderstood things about what happened when Jesus was crucified and resurrected. He was the last king. There's been, there have been no legitimate kings or kingdoms since that. There is only one kingdom. The kingdom is the kingdom of Christ. Right. On earth as it is in heaven. Absolutely. That's it. So we have, we have got to get the right mindsets. 
And we've got to understand that when we say come out of Babylon, we're coming out of a fiction. We're taking on a proper standing as ambassadors, as children of God, true children of God, sons of God, as heirs of creation. How many more things can we say? Um, Vice regents of the crown. <laughs> there you go. You know, you know, pre, uh, high priest, right? We, we've got all these titles, ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation. All this has been bestowed upon us. God has given us uh, um, spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts that are necessary for the, for the journey that we're about to take on. For the fulfillment of that appointment. Right. So it all starts to come together when you start looking at this thing. It's impossible for the beast to overcome the saints when the saints are in authority. It's only possible for the beast to overcome the saints when the saints are still choosing to use the vassal of the straw man and the state. And therefore, the, the command over and over to come out of her, lest you partake of her plagues, lest you partake of the, the judgment that's coming on her. There's a warning there. And it, the, within the warning is, if you don't come out, bad things are going to happen. Have you ever wished you could get a one-of-a-kind, high-quality knife made by Caring Hands instead of a mass-produced piece of tin? Robert's love for bladesmithing began at a young age when he met some experienced smiths and was amazed by the ages-old traditions of handcrafting metal and steel into stunning, functional artwork. When he first hit the hot steel with a hammer in 1986, he was forever hooked. Nearly four decades later, his passion is still alive and well. Robert's love and appreciation of the marvel of God's awesome creation grows even more every day. For Robert, making useful heirloom tools for others is an honor and a pleasure too. Every one of Robert's knives are one of a kind, handcrafted one by one. Following long traditions of old school craftsmanship, he uses simple carbon steel for his knife, which epitomize the best quality steel has to offer, including ease of sharpening, keenness of edge, incredible strength, and great edge holding ability. With proper care, your Robert Gardner built knife can be passed down through your house for generations. Remember that iron sharpens iron and may the double-edged sword, which is the word of God, make your path plain before you, now and forever. Robert Gardner, Blake Smith is the mission of Gardner Ministries. Gardner Ministries at Yahoo.com. That's Gardner Ministries at Yahoo.com. And so much of that, Randy, is commerce. <clears throat> so much is commerce. You know, and that's that that really goes back to all the stuff you were talking about. Um, you know, the reasons behind the devil being kicked out, cast out of yeah. heaven you know I mean, and, and ca yeah. cast out so there's 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 a there's a thread there that's that running through there through. yeah absolutely absolutely it, it, and it's it's you know i have to say rick it's not for everyone because some people live in a spirit of fear rather than a sound mind some people will think you know we're crazy until the last minute, and then they'll say, "How do I join this ecclesia?" No, <laughs> but it's okay. <clears throat> they'll think we're take crazy it. until there's a gun pointing at their head. Right. Yeah. All we can say is take it to the Lord, and if you're if you're interested in in knowing more about how we come out of Babylon, how we come out of Babylon in such a fashion that Babylon stands back because they realize. We're in, how did you put it? We're in a different standing, a different jurisdiction. Uh, we have a different king over us. How do you get Babylon to recognize that? And those, and, and that interaction between realms where those rulers and authorities in heaven recognize that. And as you said, the hosts of heaven are standing uh, ready to defend uh, the saints of heaven, to defend his kingdom. Uh, there are things that are written in prophecy that will happen. We're not trying to undo the Word of God or subvert the Word of God or get around the Word of God. Uh, we're trusting in the logos of, 
of God. We're trusting in our king. But to come out, if you're interested, how do, how do I come out not just in a spiritual concept? Yeah, I got saved. I got baptized. So I'm now to Babylon. And you're still in contract with the fictitious corporation. You're still doing commerce with the, in a fictitious manner with fictitious corporations. Um, you don't know how to, to be in the world, but not of it. Um, how do we make those things no longer just Sunday school lessons and spiritual concepts, but physical reality so that I can establish the protections uh, for my house that is literally a, a uh, satellite embassy for the ambassadors of the king. Right. Exactly. If you have that question, <laughs> Rick, are we still doing classes on Monday nights that are free to those who want to... Uh, come in and learn and understand the fiction and contracts and how it functions and works? Uh, let me check. Yep, we sure are. Yep, we're doing it. Is, is uh, the the uh, House of Hidalgo, is there still a ministry uh, from your house that is teaching legislative classes <laughs> that once you gain that basic understanding, you can learn how then you become a legislator and, and function outside of Babylon? Dehizio Private University sure is offering that course. Wow. And are there multiple state discussion groups that are meeting uh, like every day of the week? There's there's some state discussion group that you can go to the forum on shopyourfarm.com and click on forum and, and, and look and see, oh, there's my state meeting on this night and there's the moderator and and you can visit any state discussion group. And there are states that are meeting face-to-face -face meetings, some of them regularly, some of them intermittently. Are we, do we still have discussion groups coming together so that they can learn how to come out of Babylon, how to stay out of Babylon, how to react to Babylon, and how to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that those things that uh, he has within his perfect will and plan uh, will be added to us? This is my calendar. You see how busy it is? Yep, we sure do. State discussion groups, a place of learning, a place of asking questions, a place of understanding. What are these two guys talking about coming out of Babylon? What are they talking about? Fictions and corporations and, and all of these things. And why does Rick not care? <laughs> because he has a king that he recognizes and that king recognizes him as well. That king knows his name. In fact, that king tattooed Rick's name in the palm of his hand. That's how well known Rick is to that king. That's, That's why he can say, I don't care. Yeah. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> I have written the law of God on the post of my house. Now, when I say post, you're thinking <clears throat> doorpost. No, I have record books where I post the laws of my house. And when I post the laws of my house in those books, do you know what I'm doing? I'm indenturing myself <coughs> to his law. Mm. I'm coming into agreement with the people the members of my house on a particular way of life, I create acts. What's an act? An act is something that you're going to act out, that you are, you are promising to act out from now and forever. I am passing resolutions. What's a resolution? It's something that you resolve to do. I'm passing proclamations. What is a proclamation? It's a, something that you are proclaiming as true. I'm passing declarations. What are those? Those are, those are things that you declare to be. I'm passing all of those all of those type of things in my house, sitting down at a table with my kids, with my wife, and determining what we're going to agree to follow. And as we tether ourselves, as we 
engage ourselves as we become bond servants to Christ by by being indentured to those things we now have an ironclad thing that Babylon cannot attack because we are part of a private contract and private contracts cannot be violated okay they cannot be violated so when Babylon does what they do presumptivism and they send right. you some kind of a solicitation that tries to break the agreement in your house you say no 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 there is a standing agreement <clears throat> in this area in this house and you um, you know you're attempting to break it you're attempting to meddle in a private contract and uh, if you do it again this is what's going to happen there's a there's a fee that you're going to have to pay because you're meddling and there's an entire system that's developed in my house it's called a private administrative process and as soon as I'm solicited boom it takes effect an investigation happens that investigation des uh, determines who the responsible party of that solicitation is. Then there's an entire process of opportunity to cure. That that <clears throat> responsible party has an opportunity to cure the thing that they've done to damage my house, to damage the interest of my house. And if they don't, then there's a true bill. Okay? And I'm not going to tell you publicly what I do with that true bill, but I am going to tell you that it gets used in a very sophisticated way and corporations don't like it. And I'm going to add on to that to tell the people that are listening, this is not theory. Not theory. That, that Rick is, is uh, uh, espousing here. It's not uh, a great idea he had to, I'll, I'll write this down. This is literal uh, because Rick and I have both been solicited on different occasions in different ways myself even from attorneys who made certain admissions in their solicitations and i and i rebutted those solicitations and it literally they responded <clears throat> by fulfilling uh the instruction that was in my rebuttal mm -hmm. and you didn't know that did you that you can instruct those agencies that solicit you and uh it's the problem is too often, Rick, that we are living in fear rather than realizing we've not been given a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. And what you are expressing here is not theory, but is the actions of a sound mind following the word of God, the examples given in that word. And, and we've talked about this before. Example after example after example of God's people being a nation together in hostile territory, in a Babylonian system, over and over and over. And it is not without precedence in his word. So what you're hearing Rick uh, testify to, uh, I just wanted to give it a, a uh, testimony of veracity that this is not theory, this is practice that has been, uh, um, I don't, I hate the word fleshed out, <laughs> but actually acted upon. Yeah. This is, this is practice mm -hmm. that has been acted upon in real time. Yeah. These are things, these are things that have been, um, that have been protected. The interest of my house has been protected many times, um, <clears throat> upon Babylon's solicitations of my house in every area that you could possibly imagine. Um, <clears throat> and I have many examples of it in my textbook. So when you take my class, you too will be, um, will be uh, brought into the loop as to how it is that it's done. Guys, self-governing is not some kind of a magical thing where you just wave your hands and throw a bunch of Patriot <clears throat> papers at somebody and it sticks on the wall and people go, oh no, he's a Patriot, and run away. That is not how it works okay you have to have it set up let me let me let me put it this way if 
if you don't have a law in your house saying that uh, that you don't eat bananas, and Babylon comes up with a law, a statute that says everybody must eat bananas, and when that solicitation comes to you because it's been found mm. out that you ate three bananas and they're penal penalizing you and there's no law in your house stating such for you to then try to counter offer that is actually unrighteous okay at that time in that moment you can't be you you, you can't pretend like you're prepared um, you're like that virgin that didn't have any more oil and you have to run out and get some more oil, and you miss the bridegroom. Okay, so you you have to be prepared beforehand, and you have to act righteously. So, if I if I knew that Babylon was going to begin soliciting me for eating bananas, I would have sat down at my table with my children and with my wife, and we would have fleshed it out like Randy doesn't like that word but I, I used it um, we would have fleshed it out and we would have gone into the word and we would have found some scriptures that uh, that we could pull out of there that would that would uh, uh, tie us in to his law and support the fact that we don't eat bananas and then we would have agreed upon that and when that solicitation came, we're already under a private contract. It is law in our house. So Babylon sends it. I say, uh-uh-uh. Nope, that's a private contract matter. You're meddling. Go away. Here's a fee schedule. You know, the whole process. Okay? But you can't righteously do that. <clears throat> and that's where so many people find themselves. You find yourself in a situation where you have no law. And in that moment, you can't say, Lord, Lord, I healed the man in your name. Or, Lord, Lord, you know, this or that. Okay? You have to literally have it in the books of your house so that you can righteously stand up in that day and say, Lord, Lord, I, I served you as good as I, I, I knew how to. Okay? You can, so so it's, it's, a, it's a righteous way to live. It's a, it's a righteous interaction with Babylon because we're not making up lies. And let me tell you why you can't just say I'm a Christian. That means something different in about a thousand different denominations. Mm -hmm. Okay? One denomination may say bananas are great, and the next one might say bananas are evil. So saying I'm a Christian is no defense in that day. You have to have it defined in your house. Hopefully everybody's understanding what I'm saying because this is the key to self-governance. That's why you've heard me say 70 million times, authentication is one sixteenth of an inch on the one foot journey on a ruler. Okay? Oh, yeah. So if you think that you're just going to authenticate and then you're going to tell Babylon to go away, don't do that bad mistake because Babylon will call you out on your falsities they will call you out but if you actually have something structured in your house that you're defending Babylon can go nowhere and how do I know that because I've done it time and time and time again Welcome to Stone's Throw Acres. If you enjoy nature as God intended it, you'll feel right at home. Here on this ranch, work and play are one and the same. We enjoy working in and with God's nature, not against it. We wouldn't be telling you the truth if we said it was easy, but the fruits of our labor are worth every ounce of effort. We are excited to show you our little ranch. Join us at www.shopyourfarm.com and find the store at Stones Throw Acres. There, we will supply you with nutrient-dense foods at a fair price. Here at Stones Throw Acres, 
Our mission is to work with and not against God's nature to restore the soil's health and give life-giving properties. As we achieve this mission, we work towards our vision in providing an opportunity for all people to have nutrient, natural, dense foods at a fair price. Come to Stone's Throw Acres today at shopyfarm.com. When you think, because like you say, you, you've made that inch journey, <laughs> <laughs> And you think you're there, you'll find out that with without that uh, apparatus in your house, without that private uh, administrative process and the private contract already functioning, uh, which will keep uh, the big web wolf at, at bay when he comes and says he's going to huff and puff, <clears throat> without that, you are nothing more than still the straw man in the eyes of the uh, of the corporation. I use that term because people are familiar with it. Sure. But are you familiar with that that fiction, that straw man that everybody knows? Literally means that it is it is. If you look up the Latin meaning and the actual definition, and this is sort of paraphrased, it's created and existing by operation of law like a corporation yep the so actual latin is yeah. an ins legis ins legis okay mm -hmm. and an ins legis is an entity created and existing by operation of law with independent legal personality that's what it is okay so that's the most ambiguous statement that you've ever heard it can mean anything and you don't want to be that. No, you, <laughs> you don't want to be, want to be that. Because <clears throat> if if you don't have something set in your house that you're going to follow as your law, that, by the way, that's real law. Okay? You can't just start making up dumb things in your house. Like, <laughs> right. like an act to not listen to Babylon. You know, anything Babylon says, we're not going to listen, period. Everybody agree. Okay? That's stupid. Don't do that, okay? You have to have things that you can actually bring out of the Scripture, define it through Scripture, put it down on paper, and agree to it, okay? Piece by piece by piece. That is how we submit our flesh to the process of dying, okay? That's how we kill our flesh, and that's how we grow our spiritual man, is by is by constantly submitting piece by piece of of ourself into that indenture to Christ. And how did you how did you put it before, Rick? You will either be governed by the King of Kings, or you'll be governed by someone else. But you will be governed. You will either self-govern right. or be governed. Uh, yes. The default is Babylon. <laughs> the default is Bab. And if by default you are governed by Babylon, by default they are going to to view you as their chattel, as their straw man, as the entity that they created. <clears throat> that's this the that's just the default uh, set. There are so many groups around this world that are able to govern themselves in small communities all over the place <clears throat> because they have come together and they have created a subset of law that is that is uh that is real and true and can and can be defended okay through through actual you know through uh, actual law and the only the only real authority on this planet to to create that law is the word of god that really is all there is you know everything else is fictitious Everything else is fictitious, and, and both of us looked up a, a past note we had. Uh, yeah. We were in a pre-show. We both looked up, and at the same time, we came up with the, the same note that we had in our, in our notes on our desk <laughs> yep. that said, there is nothing more dangerous than a fiction being acknowledged as a provider of truth. <clears throat> that is a fact. Because fictions don't have fact. They only have presumption. They only That's how have they presumption. operate because, because they're all they're they're all the only thing the only power they have is contractual. 
they don't have any other power. So if you sign a contract with them, you get into an agreement with them, they have power. Now, now they have power. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, uh, well, I don't know how we got here, but it was an inter interesting conversation, Rick. But it literally goes back to where we started kind of uh, uh, mocking just a little bit, if you'd say, the, the, the events going on right now in the world. And to, to readdress those, you know, the what the 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 eclipse and and all the the disasters and and the news we hear um, and this legislation and you know this world uh, organization, all of those things are concerning, unless you are at that place where uh, Rick just described, where you can truly say, I don't care because Jesus is king, not gonna be king. Jesus is king, and uh, his promises are true. His word is true. He is a faithful king, and uh, you can trust his word, and you can trust your life in his hands, and you have to come to that place uh, that, as uh, you were quoting from uh, Revelation a while ago, that... Uh, the blood of the lamb, which is our king, the word of our testimony, and part of that um, private uh, apparatus for your for your house that you're talking about. And uh, I have a hard time with that terminology sometimes. It just it, it just escapes me. It's PAP, P-A-P, private administrative process in your house, is the testimony of your house. So by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, that that process is the testimony of your house and coming to that I don't care place where you don't love your fictitious lives unto death. What is the result of that? You're an overcomer. Yeah, you're an overcomer. And that's what you are. If you're listening to this program and you've been pricked at the heart about uh, creating a apparatus in your house, <clears throat> coming out of Babylon, being a part of this ecclesia, um, come on board. You know, we're we're open for business per se. Uh to anybody who wants who wants to come in who's got uh the mind of Christ. So <clears throat> so uh you know l let's do it. And Randy, you're right. Um I don't know how we got to this point tonight either <laughs> we've just been we just been flying by the spirit tonight and it's allowing him to just use us in in whatever way to to, to say whatever comes to our mind but um i want to turn <clears throat> this over uh to you for a last word i don't know if you have a poem for us tonight but uh i do and part part okay. of our conversation rick if you recall we were we were talking about maybe going down the route of talking about the ministries of our, of our individual houses. Right. And of course, part of yours was shown, you know, in, in the, uh, the Hijo private university and, uh, the ministry of my house is varied, uh, depending on the needs, um, you know, what God has needs me to do, wants me to, to do desires that I do, but it started as a poetry ministry and that's still functioning. In fact, if you go to shopyourfarm.com, you can find uh, five books of poetry there uh, that, I, that I have written. And I still, you know, that's still part of the ministry of the House of Conway. And some, I'm some, of, those, a, some of those are behind you, right? Some of those are behind me. Yeah, that yeah. Before the Thunder Sounds and uh, Meet Me at the Cross. And yeah, those, those are uh, some of those. But that's part of the ministry of the House of Conway. And since we're already at the end of our time, uh, I won't go into any other other details about it. But that is a, a part of my ministry uh, of the House of Conway. And it functions from my house and not from any Babylonian source. Uh, now, I do source Babylon in regards to some sales. You can get them at Barnes & Noble or Amazon. But the, the, they get nothing from my ministry for that. I don't, don't pay them anything to facilitate that. Um, now they withhold funds if, if they sell one of them, which is fair. 
you know, they, they printed it and sold it. Now I'm kind of rambling, but I'm trying to describe the fact that that's the part of the ministry of my house as well. And, uh, you, and, and you have rules that pertain to that, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, so that being said, and Rick's instruction of uh, the uh, uh, establishing the rules and the laws and the acts and the resolutions of your house being based on the word of God, not based on your whim, <laughs> not based on, on. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you literally cannot say I identify as a skunk. And make a law out of it. Okay. <laughs> make a law out of it. Yeah. Not based on the pizza dream you had last night, right? right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a very short poem, Rick. And it's it's literally entitled God's Word. <clears throat> because without that, without God's Word, there is no foundation uh, to build uh, any self-governing apparatus of your house upon. It's... It's sinking sand without without it. It goes like this, right? God's word is a lamp unto my feet, a place where I and my father meet. My comfort sweet in times of sorrow, the strength I need to face tomorrow, a source of wisdom to my simple mind, answers to mysteries man alone can never find. It is a sword within my hand, the solid rock upon which I stand. It's the meat upon which I feed, a boundless supply to fill my needs. God's word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a place where I and the Father meet. In everything that we do here at the C2K Report, it's all about the blood. 